My name is Bruce Borkovich, and I am the Director of Public Safety at Ferris State University. We are proud of our safe campus, and we work hard to keep the people and property at Ferris State safe. We all know that an attack can happen anywhere, regardless of the historical safety of a community. Today, we are going to discuss what you can do to help Ferris State University continue to keep everyone safe. I'm going to talk to you about four important parts of an incident and how this knowledge can help you and others prevent or survive an attack. I will tell you about the following. One, the warning signs of an at-risk person who may be planning an attack. Two, the four stages of an attack. Three, the nature of the attack. And four, what you can do to survive the attack. First, I will tell you about some signs of an at-risk person who may be planning an attack. This person may make threats of suicide or self-harm. This person may make threats of violence, directly or implied. This person may have a fascination or obsession in asserting ownership of firearms not consistent with the history of the person. This person may have a history of violence or behavior obviously insensitive to others. This person may have a preoccupation with themes of violence. This person may have a preoccupation with previous incidents or publicized violent acts or school shootings. This person may be observed intimidating others or being frequently confrontational. This person may be observed crossing boundaries, such as excessive emails, phone calls, etc. This person may exhibit a marked academic performance decline. This person may have notable changes in personality, mood, or behavior. This person may begin giving away personal belongings. A notable decline in personal hygiene may be observed. Alcohol or substance abuse issues increase. This person may become focused upon thematic writing assignments or drawings that often center on killing, revenge, and other violence. If you observe a person who displays this type of behavior, tell someone, a professor, the police, a staff member, or a friend. Early intervention may provide a person at risk with the help necessary to avoid an attack. Second, I will describe the four stages of an attack. Number one, the first is the fantasy stage. In this stage, this person may be producing disturbing, hostile, or dark drawings, writings, or speech. Two is the planning stage. Their thoughts become replaced by action, planning, research, surveillance, and declarative writings, such as a manifesto. Third is the preparation stage. This person now devotes time to gathering materials, forewarning friends, and training. Finally, the approach and implementation stage. The attacker approaches the target, has weapons in hand or in a bag, backpack, etc., and the attacker makes entry and executes the plan. In a majority of the mass school attacks, the shooter tells at least one person what their plans are before the attack. Third, I will tell you about the nature of the attack. Remember, the attacker typically has the attack planned out. This plan will most likely include how the attack will end, either with an armed confrontation with the responding police or with their suicide. The attacker typically plans a quick attack on the softest and most vulnerable targets, and the victims are chosen at random. The police are trained to quickly respond to the attack and confront the attacker. The police have to stop the attack before they can begin to help injured victims. Finally, there are things that you can do to help you and others survive an attack. Remember these three actions, run, hide, and fight. First, if an attack happens and you can get away from the area, run, leave your belongings behind other than your cell phone. Also remember that as you are exiting, Law enforcement may be entering and they do not know who you are. As you are exiting, keep your hands visible and raised and follow their commands. Please remember that we may have students, 
faculty or staff with disabilities in the area and make sure that someone is assisting them with this process. If you cannot get out, then you should hide out. Find a safe room if one is available. Hide in an area out of the view of the attacker. If possible, turn off the lights and hide from the view of the door or window. Try to lock or block access to the room. Silence your cell phones. If you cannot hide out or are discovered, then fight. As a last resort, when your life or the life of others with you is in danger, do everything in your power to take out the shooter. This is not the time for warnings or reason. If you or others do not start this person, they will likely harm you. Convince others to join in your counterattack. Use anything you can as a weapon. If possible, and the attacker is in your room, call 911 and put the phone down so emergency personnel can hear what is going on. Remember, the police are coming, but they do not know who is involved in the attack. When you eventually exit, do so with your hands empty and in the air and closely follow the commands of law enforcement. Your knowledge and understanding of these actions could make the difference in life or death in the unlikely event you are present when an active attack occurs.